Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick vlog on something I wrote on Twitter recently. So I'm gonna read the Twitter tweet and then I will uh, comment further. So I write, it's funny to see so many young developers looking for that killer language slash framework that in their nerdly minds will give them the advantage. Meanwhile, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, eBay, and all the super players out there are built using old crappy languages. And then I tweeted uh, a bit of a joke today. I said, breaking news, Instagram just realized that their app is not successful because they use 20 year old Python and the Django frame framework instead of using bleeding edge hipster stack number 269. I got a pretty good response to these tweets. I'll, uh, I'll put them here maybe, no, here, anyhow. Larger point I've been trying to make lately. The natural tendency for young nerds is to look for that special stack or that, that language that will make all the difference. I keep on driving the point, trying to drive the point home that these days, there is no special universal special stack. There's no stack. There's no language that is universally better than the other. Everything is very circumstantial now. For certain tasks, certain languages are better. This is something I've been preaching for a while. If you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while, you know that is the case. I'm going to keep mentioning it because it's such an important thing. It's a, a point of anxiety for a lot of people to think that they may be going down the wrong technology path. They may be choosing the wrong path. Now, problem is this is uh, reinforced to a certain extent by other young nerdlings, 20 year olds, who are trying to sell a course or something. Or maybe they're just zealous about a particular language. It's something that you do when you're in your early 20s or you're, you're in the very first years of your programming career. As you become more knowledgeable, you realize that it's nonsense to believe that there's advantages, uh, universal advantages rather, that a particular language or framework might give. Yes, sometimes it happens where the market matures and they go on to other things, but you'd be surprised how many uh, Java, old Java apps that are still lingering out there and are powering a huge part of the systems that are being run today. You'd be surprised how many uh, PHP applications are out there. Maybe not. You know, all those WordPress sites, millions and millions, tens and tens of millions of WordPress sites are running fine on WordPress. WordPress is PHP. I could go on and on and on and on. Let me point out one big advantage, by the way, of using old technology. One of the big advantages nobody points out is that old technology can mean uh, job security and job opportunity. If all the young hipster nerdlings are jumping into some brand new cutting edge tech where there are a lot of times not too many jobs in that, there's a big advantage to being, for example, a code fusion coder. Not many code fusion jobs out there, but there's probably a lot less code fusion programmers. So uh, if you happen to be one of those few code fusion programmers, it's, it's abundance for you because you have companies who may have invested tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or more in their applications that are all code fusion based. I'm just using code fusion as, as an example. I haven't looked at it personally, but, um, and who cares if it's only being used 1% of the time, right? If only half of the jobs are being filled because nobody's learning cold fusion and you're doing cold fusion, you can make bank for a long time. That's an opportunity there for you. Another, some, another thing to consider that somebody mentioned was that a lot of these cutting edge technologies simply are not being used. Yes, a lot of hipsters will say, you gotta learn this, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. and. When you actually go out in the workplace and you want to get a job, you find that uh, people are not using it. I am, as somebody who actively develops an app, uh, and somebody who puts money into apps development, I'm very reluctant to adopt any new technology, just like any other business is. And the reason they're very reluctant to adopt new technologies, not because they're 
old school and they're dumb or because they don't see the advantage. No, they look at uh, the broader picture, which you should do as a developer. And the broader picture is that you don't want to find yourself using a stack that never really catches on fire and never takes off. Imagine if you spend 50 grand, 100 grand, a million building uh, an application and your business depends on the application and you were using some cutting edge tech and you find about four years later that nobody wants to use it anymore. It happens all the time. And then you're stuck because good luck trying to find new people. If you find people that are going to charge you an arm and a leg and you got this, this investment in this technology and you're stuck, you're in a corner, you have to rewrite from scratch, or you're gonna have to pay through the nose to find people. Not a good position to be in. And even worse, perhaps, if the, if the technology does not take off, you may find yourself with an abandoned technology. And then you're in big trouble. For example, Flash. Flash, it got pretty big. It was one of the most important technologies out there at one point, but it got killed because it was non-standard, and non-standard technology is always more vulnerable to open standard tech. Keep that in mind. Even if the non-standard tech has some sort of technical advantages that you may perceive, keep that in mind. Non-standard, closed tech is uh, dangerous because you never know what happens. So imagine you built your whole infrastructure, your whole app structure on Flash-based user interfaces and so on. And all of a sudden now Flash is no longer supported, they're no longer doing updates, no more security updates, no more function updates, feature updates. What are you gonna do? You're stuck up a river, you know, with no paddle. That's an old expression. And uh, then you're in trouble. But of course, if you use tried and true Java or C Sharp or uh, PHP or Python Django, even Ruby Rails, although Ruby Rails is fading, fading, fading. Um, that's something to consider. So I'll leave this video with this, uh, this notion here that um, when you're selecting your technology choices, it's not just the uh, merits of the tech in of itself. A lot of times there are business considerations, market considerations, and of course individual project considerations you have to take into account when you're making your choices. Again, to re-emphasize what I always say is that you should learn on a need to nerd basis, master your fundamentals, then you do the need to nerd basis, you follow that philosophy, and you'll be in a very good position. If you don't know the need to nerd philosophy, where have you been? Where have you been? You've been watching my channel? Come on. Now, if you want to learn about need to nerd, shameless plug, sign up to my newsletter below, it's free, and you get access to content that does not appear on YouTube or any other social media platform. It's strictly for the Need to Nerd subscribers. And I talk about the Need to Nerd philosophy, which is a philosophy that will serve you well for your entire career uh, as a developer, as a coder, and beyond that as well. So, uh, and this philosophy is based on my over two decades experience in the game. So um, that's it for today. Bye-bye.